Um, next, we're moving on to the 2020 competition. Um, and the theme for that, again, was vision. And we're going to start with the writing for children category. So first place for writing for children is Tracy Turner Jones. Hi there, um, I'm a white badger. Um, I come third a couple of times in this category. I can't remember which years, so it was wonderful to win this time and, and finally get here. It was really great, so thank you very much. Uh, this is my story, The Elephant in the Room. Toby knew something was wrong, but it was like a subtraction. He couldn't quite work it out. When he asked mum and dad, they were too busy to talk to him. So he tried asking his big sister, Eva, but she told Toby that he was too young to understand. Toby thought she didn't know either. He wanted to ask Gran, but mum said he and Eva shouldn't bother her too often. One day after school, as mum opened the front door, out of the corner of his eye, Toby saw something little and gray scurry into the hallway with them. Did you see that? He pointed to the bottom of the staircase. Yuck, not a mouse, said Eva. No, it's an elephant, Toby said, and put his hands out to show them. This big. The little elephant ran along the hallway. Toby followed it into the kitchen. There it is, he said. It went under the cooker. Don't be silly, Eva said. Uh, maybe you just imagined it, Mum said. Toby knew he wasn't imagining the elephant, and he knew who would believe him. He ran upstairs and knocked on Gran's door. Come and sit here, Toby, she said, patting her bed. Gran had lived with Toby's family for a long time. She told the funniest and most exciting stories, but best of all, Gran always knew if something wasn't right, without Toby even having to say a word. He told Gran about the elephant he'd seen in the kitchen. Ah, that elephant, she said quietly. You believe me? Oh yes, I know that elephant. He comes to remind us that there's something important to say, Gran said. You'll see him again, I'm sure, but watch out because he's going to get bigger. The next morning, when Toby came downstairs for breakfast, the elephant was standing on top of the washing machine. It was about the size of a cat. Now can you see the elephant, he asked. Dad was staring at his phone. What elephant? Oh, not that again, Mum said. Toby didn't understand why they couldn't see it. At dinner time, the elephant sat with them at the table in Gran's chair. Why doesn't Gran eat dinner with us anymore? Toby asked. More peas, Mum said. At bedtime, the elephant followed Toby and Dad upstairs. It lay on the end of Toby's bed while Dad read a story to him. That night, Toby dreamed that he and Gran were riding on a huge grey elephant through the jungle. Above them, monkeys swung from branch to branch. Then his elephant stopped, but Gran's kept going. Toby wanted to go with her, but he couldn't. Gran turned and waved goodbye, and then she disappeared into the jungle. When Toby woke up, he wondered if the little elephant was just a dream. But when he went down for breakfast, it was still there, and now it was the size of a big dog. The next few days, it went with them everywhere. It went with them in the car. Toby's squashing me, said Eva. It's not me, it's the elephant. It went with them to the pool, climbed to the highest diving board and jumped. A big wave swept across the water. Wow, that's the best wave machine ever, said Eva. It was the elephant, said Toby. The elephant went with Toby and his dad to see a film. It put its trunk into Toby's popcorn and sprayed it everywhere. Stop making a mess, said Toby's dad. It wasn't me, said Toby, it was the elephant. But his dad still couldn't see it. That night, the elephant went up the stairs. It got stuck halfway up, so Toby had to lean against its bottom and push it to the top. It was far too big now to sit on Toby's bed, so it sat in the corner of his room by the window. Eva walked by Toby's open door and stopped. I can see it now. She ran over to the elephant and gave it a big hug. 
The next day, it was even bigger. And in the evening, when they were about to watch a film, Toby and Eva said they couldn't see because the elephant was standing in front of the television. What elephant? asked Dad. That elephant, Gran said from the staircase. Oh, Mum and Dad said together. At last, they could see it. Out you go, said Mum, but the elephant didn't move. There's only one way to make that elephant leave, said Nan. She hobbled over to it and stroked its floppy ears. We have to talk about what's important. Mum and Dad nodded. Gran sat on the couch and put her arms around Toby and Eva. She told them how tired she was and how soon it was time for her to have a very long sleep. You see, I'm getting ready now for a very different adventure, she said. I dreamt that you were riding an elephant in the jungle, said Toby. Gran smiled. I'd like that very much. Can't we come with you? Eva asked. Gran shook her head. Oh no, I have to go on my own. As she talked, the elephant got smaller and smaller until when she'd finished speaking, it was as tiny as when it had arrived. It lifted its trunk and trumpeted, but it came out as a squeak. Then as quickly as it had come, the elephant left the room and disappeared. Mum sniffed and wiped away a tear on her cheek. Now, Toby, said Gran, would you help me back to bed? After the elephant left, Gran didn't come downstairs again. And not long after, one night, she went to sleep and didn't wake again. Toby missed his Gran and he even missed the elephant. But if he ever felt too sad, he would lie in bed and imagine Gran riding through the jungle on a big grey elephant with floppy ears. And that always made him smile. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, I shouldn't come too close to that microphone with this one. Hold on. Oh, this is my favorite part, the wiping down. We're just ready now for Lynn, our dear Lynn, who has won second place. We need some incidental music. I know, I know, there should be sound effects. What laser show, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so now we're ready for second place, Lynn Hallett. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, that's a little sticky. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> if there's a pause, you'll know why. Um, okay, so this is my fourth time here at Swanwick. I absolutely love it. I did um, three days back in 2017 to test the waters and loved it so much I've not been away since, um, apart from obviously last year when none of us could come. Um, I've had quite a good track record with this competition. Actually, it's the only one I ever get placed in, so I'm quite happy. And this is a second place this year. I've had a third before with a children's story and an adult one. So I'm hoping you like this. I'm quite fond of rhyme. It's called The Scrooge Creature and you'll find out what it's all about. Okay. <clears throat> Outside playing, Stanley Meek heard the most horrendous shriek. So loud, so shrill, his blood turned cold. He really wasn't very bold. He ran for cover to his den, rolled tight into a ball and then, once his heart stopped beating fast, peeped outside his den at last. He first looked left and then looked right. Um, but there was nothing odd in sight. All was quiet and all was still. He thought he'd play again until another shriek tore through the air. So terrible he didn't dare to leave his den all afternoon for fear that he would very soon meet whatever made the noise a something which perhaps et boys. His mum came out eventually and yelled, Oi Stan, it's time for tea. And so he scurried to his house as quickly as a little mouse. All that night it filled his dreams, the creature which had screamed the screams, partly owl and partly cat, with wavy wings just like a bat, pointed ears and yellow eyes, and vicious beak of such a size. And when it opened up that beak, out came the most horrendous shriek. Its current home was right next door, behind the fence, upon the floor, but it could climb and it could fly, and nothing could escape its eye. And in his dream, it quickly swooped and in its awful claws, it scooped him up and took him back next door and ate him right up on the floor. 
The screecher creature was its name, and finding tasty prey its aim. He didn't sleep much more that night, and hid beneath the sheets in fright. Next day at breakfast, his mum said, Are you okay? You look half dead. I'm fine, said Stan, no need to worry. Good, mum said, now hurry, hurry. What's all the rush? I've got no school. There is no rush, dear, as a rule, but we are going round to meet the newest family in the street. They've got a boy same age as you, and he might need a friend or two. So which house do they live in then? Next door to us at number 10. Next door? I can't go there, Stan squeaked. Why are they not? You must, Mum shrieked. Stan didn't dare to disobey. If Mum was there, he'd be okay. And yet his heart beat faster now, and beads of sweat sat on his brow. His stomach churned, he felt quite sick. He'd better get this over quick. Cheer up, said Mum. She'd no idea how Stan was truly gripped by fear of a beast with monstrous screams that had haunted all his dreams. Mum rang the bell. A lady came. Hello, come in. And what's your name? She smiled at Stan and he smiled back. Stanley. Nice. My son's called Jack. He's outside playing. You can too. He's so excited to meet you. Come on, let's go and find him now. He had to go to save a row, and yet he feared what lurked out there, the screecher creature and its lair. But everything outside was calm, with nothing there to do him harm. Jack came up and said, hooray, I'm glad you've come around to play. Have my scooter if you like, and I will chase you on my bike. Okay, said Stanley, can't catch me, and scooted off with hoots of glee. They played tag next, then hide and seek, and that was when poor Stanley Meek, hiding underneath the slide, truly thought he had been spied. Not by Jack, but by the beast, which on his tender flesh would feast. Once again, horrendous cries. Stan gulped and then screwed up his eyes. If I can't see the beast, thought he, maybe, perhaps, it won't see me. But then he thought about his friend, who might be first to meet his end. Although, that said, Jack seemed all right. No signs at all he'd taken fright. Which made Stan think, despite the noise, this creature did not hunt down boys. So, braver now, he clambered out and took a look around about. Eight, nine, ten, he heard Jack say, I'm coming now, I'm on my way. Oh, Stan, you were supposed to hide. I did, I went under the slide. You know the rules, you stay somewhere until I found you fair and square. I came to check you were all right. Stan didn't say he'd taken fright. Jack looked puzzled, then he smiled. I guess the howl seemed pretty wild. My baby sister's temper's bad. When she cries, it drives us mad. She wants attention or her feed and shrieks until someone takes heed. We make her wait a bit to teach her not to be a screecher creature. <laughs> Stan's eyes popped out to hear that name. Jack called the monster just the same. A baby though, not owl come cat, with wavy wings just like a bat. Stan rolled about the floor and laughed to think that he had been so daft. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. And our final um, children's fiction reader is one of our shortlistees where we'll hear a little excerpt. This is the, the excerpts are so tantalizing and I do hope they read, uh, that they end up with um, like, um, Readings in the bar later, you know, where we can hear the whole thing. We have um, Julia Patterson. Thank you very much. This is called Vision Through the Pillow Portal. I think I've got time to read it all. I'm not sure. Let's see. Time for sleep, said Mummy, as she tucked Bramwell up in bed. Bath, stories, and so to sleep, ready for a busy day ahead. But Bramwell wasn't sleepy. He'd had such a lovely day. His head was full of busyness. All he wanted to do was play. I wish I could fall asleep, he said out loud as Mummy closed the door. And all at once, his pillow glowed and a portal from the middle showed. Mm -hmm. Through the portal, he was led, floating, falling, fa falling, floating, till at last he landed gently onto a sandy ocean bed. Oh, what wondrous sights he saw down in that ocean blue. A snapper fish came drifting by, followed by a mackerel too. An orange clownfish made him laugh, pulling funny fish faces as he passed. Bramwell gurgled and giggled with glee. The ocean bed's a great place to be. Sea anemones blew bubbles and a butterfly fish swam by. 
Snails slowly slithered on the sandy bed and a stingray caught his eye. He counted many creatures as he floated happily, when suddenly a bright light shone and with a whoosh the ocean scene had gone. The, the morning sunlight lit up his room. Bramwell was back home in bed. A world of visions they still remained, whirling happily in his head. Aww. Thank you. Thank you so much.